Alrighty, we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. We have arrived here in Baku. It is round seven for the Midwest Formula One Division Three Championship here, and it's the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And my, oh my, if uh, what we saw last weekend in the uh, real-life Formula One circuit is anything to go by, uh, never mind what we've seen so far here in uh, Division 3 up until now, this is going to be a fantastic race. I'm really excited to kick this one off here at uh, one of the more challenging circuits here on the calendar, uh, rivaled only to that of uh, possibly Monaco, Singapore, but here in Baku, it is a, a very challenging circuit. Got to get that out of the way right here, right now. And right on that view alone, you can see why. Look at the walls. Look at how close to the track these walls are. Drivers are absolutely going to have to make sure to, uh, to stay within track limits more so than usual. Absolutely nail the corners. Be perfect. Lap in, lap out, or you're going to have a bad time here. We are uh, here just kicking off our short qualifying session. 18 minutes of non-stop qualifying action. I'm sure you all know the drill by now. And then, of course, after qualifying, we jump into the 50% race here around the Baku Street circuit here. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And I'm probably going to say it a few more times here. But uh, Baku always seems to be able to bring out the best and worst of of, uh, of everybody but hopefully here for the division three championship hopefully it brings out the best of everybody um especially after uh, after last week with um uh, a couple incidents that uh, i shall not name shall not go back on uh hoping for a little bit more smooth sailing on that part here um uh, around baku looking to be the case we've got 19 drivers here on the grid lots of returning faces and uh, we are here with it's heavy in the Ferrari car as he's heading down the long back straight we'll right on board will take us through a lap here for it's heavy across the line you go right now into turn one you want to take as much of the inside line as possible that's all right too the way you take it but you don't want to go too wide you don't want to hit that wall don't want to invalidate same idea with turn two Ooh, or else that might be uh, that's the best case scenario there a little bit of a tank slapper through turn two uh, worst case scenario you hit the wall and you're uh, gonzo alonzo there approaching another 90 degree corner here for turn three you're noticing a trend here in the early stage of the lap Turn four, more of the same, 90 degree corner, slow in, fast out, and uh, even turn five at the end of sector one, start of sector two, 90 degree, but you really got to set yourself up for uh, this corner section there, it's the left and then the right hander, uh, you'd make the left right, you've got the right hander, great, this is the more challenging portion of the circuit, that corner right there, and then into the castle section, up the hill you go, around the right hander, into the left hander, you can see the amount of curve you're cutting, that's exactly how you want to take it there, maximize the exit speed, here in these sweeping left handed corners at the back end of the section, carrying a lot of speed, Hit the brakes a little earlier than you'd like there, or else you might risk uh, slamming into the wall, as we saw in the uh, real-life Formula One circuit, and possibly here today. Almost home free now, the left-hander, and uh, this uh, corner section over here, you're taking a lot of speed through here. It doesn't look all that threatening, and uh, it's heavy, making it look absolutely easy on this onboard, but... Don't, uh, don't, uh, don't let off here, because uh, you're so close to the end, and that's not where you want to be taking wing damage. Down the long back straight, 210 miles an hour, and there you go. That is a lap of Baku. It's heavy doing it in a 144.3, but, uh, as we saw, definitely room for improvement. Clogmonger, uh, very quickly goes much faster, a 141.5. That's a little bit more what we could come to expect here. Now, uh, it looks like his teammate, that was a C. Freeman, uh, just uh, hanging out there in the uh, in the uh, in the runoff area of turn two. Got to watch out. You've got a Red Bull here. That might be Team B7. Re uh, no, that was actually a VTEC who just crossed the line. As uh, many drivers are putting lap times on the board, Static Hazard actually holding provisional pole position as of right now a 140.523 
Chunky Corgi, second fastest right now with a 140.797. And uh, I'll be honest here, after uh, after the strong showing uh, last year, last season I should say, from uh, Chunky Corgi, for the uh, for the most part, I uh, I'm expecting a lot from the uh, the McLaren driver. He's been very consistent this season. I'm sure he's put a lot of work in here in Baku. Actually led the Azerbaijan Grand Prix last uh, last season here in Division Three, if I recall correctly. And uh, looking uh, at least initially looking to uh, start off pretty well here up into P2. Houdini down in P3. We'll switch over to uh, let's give uh, Subtle a little bit of, a little bit of love here on the stream. I should say coming through in uh, at the end of sector one through into sector two as of right now approaching the ever so dangerous castle section here on this um, on this track we'll see a 139.6 is the new time to beat it's heavy heading around a second time and uh, without the spotlight of the stream it seems uh, whips out an absolute flyer of a lap the first driver to break into the 139s the sub 140s here he takes provisional pole position knocking a static hazard down to a second position here on the timing tables but still a little over a little under 12 minutes to go in qualifying I should say 11 minutes and 40 seconds and counting and uh, you can see there on your screen uh, on the timing tables there pocket rocket uh, very quickly out of qualifying uh, that is planned that is coordinated now for those who might remember around Silverstone pocket rocket uh, did make that mistake of hitting the ready up button a little bit early so he will be serving a, a qualifying ban here so getting that out of the way not getting himself in more hot water uh, it's a tough lesson to learn but uh, I'm sure it's definitely been learned here for the uh, for the next few laps but subtle meanwhile on your screen crossing the line goes ninth fastest so uh, into a top 10 goes uh, subtle but whole with a 141.6 here for his uh, best time so far looking to be going on a, a second lap no uh, oh my goodness a second lap though here this time around still has that ERS open uh, but uh, not looking to be too much on pace there with that sector one time as uh, he's a second and a half slower than his uh, previous previous lap time but we'll switch over uh, we've got uh, Valentine here currently on an out lap coming through the uh, the castle section so we'll keep an eye out on Valentine as he's looking to get that first lap time set on the board looks like a uh, racing ginger in the Haas is uh, heading down the long back straight here um, uh, might be diving into the pits I believe well right on board he was on those medium tires up into P11 yes definitely heading into the pits uh, with that speed there, uh, we saw Subtle, Unholy Red Eye not uh, on a lap right now, Dissection also not on a lap, diving into the pits, so I think uh, Valentine is uh, going to be the lead runner, so we'll stick with Valentine. Now, Valentine is here uh, reserving for uh, for K-Dog, as uh, K-Dog, she's up in Division 2, reserving with the, uh, with the faster drivers up there, so uh, Valentine covering the seat. We'll see what uh, Valentine can do here on his first lap in that Renault car. And uh, we know Valentine, when he can get the race together, he's definitely on it. The question here for, uh, for the Renault driver this week is, will he be on or will he be off? I'm going to hope that he's going to be on, but um, uh, that's something I do hope for every driver. It'll all start off here with this lap, getting so close to the wall there on turn three, but doesn't look like he hit it there, and that's uh, what you want to be doing here in Baku. Really taking, uh, I call them the eSports lines, uh, where you just get so close to the wall, maximizing your lines, maximizing your speed, but you never actually hit the wall. You just get uh, inches away, slap a piece of paper between that front wing between that car and the wall and that'll actually stay up it won't even fall through uh, but looking to be a decent lap so far oh but that is not gonna help an invalidation for Valentine and you can see the frustration as he weaves the car on the uh, on your screen so is going to have to go again but no time on the board and I think he was happy with his pace up until then uh, with the uh, with the weaving with the frustration uh, but still a lot of time to get the uh, Get time on the board here for uh, for Valentine. Here comes uh, Crustier T as uh, he's in the Williams uh, reserving 
for, um, I believe it's, uh, well, both Williams are actually not here. Um, I believe it's, uh, let's just say a wild meta here, just to make things a little bit easier on me for the time being, as I try to pull up the, uh, as I try to pull up my, uh, my standings, my stats here for, uh, for Division 3, and, uh, we can get a little bit more of a better idea. Uh-oh, I'm seeing Team B7 Racing just got disconnected. Not happy to be, uh, seeing that. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be sticking with Crustier T here just for the moment, uh, but once I do get a... A, a tiny little bit of a breather, breath in the action. I'll uh, see if I can get an invite sent off to uh, Team B7 Racing. See if we can get them back here in the session. Uh, but for now, Crustier T in that Williams. He is uh, out on that flying lap, heading towards Sector 3. Uh, the long, long back straight of Sector 3, or I guess the start-finish straight. Um, uh, tomato, tomato for me here on the stream. You can see carrying the speed, 200 miles an hour and counting heading up to 210 miles an hour as he heads towards the line what's it going to be second fastest for the Williams driver here a 140.436 as uh, very quickly bumped down to third as that was static hazard in the racing point who um, uh, very quickly it becomes the second driver to break into the 139s uh, only just though a 139.964 for the uh, the racing point driver here here, but still, it's it's heavy. Who is uh, on the uh, the top of the leaderboards here now? Um, as I'm seeing a lot of drivers here on their outlaps. Bear with me a moment. I'll see if I can get uh, Team B7 Racing uh, back in the lobby here, so we can uh, maybe get one more lap in before the end of the session. So. Apologies for that, as uh, I will just uh, very quickly get that sent off, and uh, we'll be right back to the action very shortly here for the end of qualifying. Alrighty, we are back here. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. I have got that, uh, I did send that invite out there as I got very lucky to catch that uh, just very quickly. Now, as uh, I'll switch over to, uh, let's see, who is on a flying lap right now? Uh, looks like is Static Hazard setting another lap. I don't think so. Just uh, based on the uh, based on the timer, I don't think it's going to be a lap to remember. Uh, we saw Crystal T dissection has an invalidation. Houdini, he's on a lap right now in that Ferrari as uh, he sets a purple first sector there, and uh, it's looking to be an absolute flyer here so far through sector one. We'll see if he can keep it up here. So we'll stick with the Ferrari driver, and uh, I will use this time to. Uh, to go through the uh, to go through the drivers championship now uh, P1 right now subtle but whole in the McLaren currently down in P11 in this qualifying order and uh, is definitely going to want to improve between now and the end of the session because five points behind in P2 is the uh, the man on your screen Houdini in that Ferrari with 110 points and then of course uh, P3, P4 in the drivers, we've got the two Red Bull drivers, Young DJ CJ uh, leading the two with 104 points, but VTech right behind with 100 points in uh, P4, so a little bit of a Red Bull civil war, uh, we could say, but crucially, um, uh, Young DJ CJ is up in Division 2 as well, and that is why we have B, uh, Team B7 racing, I should say, in that Red Bull seat here this week. Now, I do believe uh, young DJ CJ will still be getting uh, points for his uh, driver's championship. So uh, definitely something to keep out. But um, for um, young DJ CJ, it's uh, going to be a little bit more of a challenge as uh, he's up there with the Division 2 drivers, similar to, uh, to K-Dog a little bit earlier there. Now, uh, Dissection currently on a lap right now. If we ride on board, he's on those soft tires. And this is a great time just to uh, quickly take a look at the... Uh, I'll take a look at the best tires. So out of the top 10 right now, you've got Unholy Red Eye with their best time on the mediums, as well as a Capital in the um, uh, in the Renault and VTEC in the Ferrari with medium tire times. But you can see that uh, here later on in this session, they're feeling a lot more comfortable with those soft tires. 
So uh, everybody except for Racing Ginger currently has a set of soft tires on, um, and those on track are all running with the soft tires. So we'll see these times really pick up here between now and the end of the station. And look at that. Valentine puts a lap together and an absolute banger of a lap, a 139.4. Dissection crosses the line and goes P5 here with uh, a little under three minutes to go in this qualifying session you saw there on your screen briefly drivers are hitting the track looking to get their final lap time set here between now and the end of the session we'll uh, i was gonna say we'll ride with v uh vtech excuse me but uh, he's not on a lap right now currently conserving his ers so uh, we'll switch over to somebody else who uh, may or may not be on a lap. Let's see, Houdini's looking to improve. Uh, definitely not going to be an improvement here as I think uh, now he's going around for one more lap on those soft tires for real this time. We'll uh, see if he can improve on that 140.7. See if he can break into the 139s, break into the sub 140s um, as uh, we've seen three other drivers do so far in this short qualifying session and uh, possibly possibly improve on that uh, P6 that he has on the board but it's the Renault of Valentine who's currently leading the way on provisional pole less than two minutes to go in this short qualifying session now through sector one Houdini's been uh, relatively uh, relatively even I should say uh, not much of an improvement, a little bit slower, but only by seven one hundredths of a second. So relatively the, the same lap time, uh, I would think, uh, compared to his best. But uh, Sector 2 is going to give us a little bit of a better idea of whether or not he's going to improve or not. Kaz is currently on a lap right now, all the way down in P17. Uh, no time on the board, and uh, one of two drivers to not have a time set just yet. So they are going to have to be perfect, both... Kaz and C. Freeman are going to have to be perfect here. And there you go. Eight one hundredths of a second quicker through sector two. So it's a purple lap time here so far. Or a purple second sector. We'll see if he can keep it up in the sector three. VTech retiring out of qualifying. Looking to be in the pits. So not going to be improving on his time. So best of the rest for now but could fall further depending on how this qualifying plays out. Across the line goes Houdini. He does improve up one position up to P5, and we are up down to the last 30 seconds of this qualifying session. Valentine sitting on pole in the pits right now, so he's going to have to uh, a hope and a prayer, I should say that um, the likes of It's Heavy, Houdini, a Static Hazard, who have been showing a lot of pace here, don't improve on their times or don't improve enough to out-qualify Valentine on, um, at the end of the session. Down to the final five seconds as Kaz is heading towards the line. What is the Alfa Romeo's time going to be as qualifying ticks down? Kaz to the line slowing way down there and uh, is going to be starting uh, in what I can only assume is going to be a lowly P17 as uh, he is uh, definitely keeping some pace in his back pocket here for the race trying to run a, an interesting strategy and uh, he did mention that on the discord that uh, he was looking to uh, run a uh, run an alternate strategy here so uh, we'll see how that plays out for the Alfa Romeo drivers see Freeman heading towards the line here what's the time going to be up to P13 for the Alfa Tario 142.5 but all eyes now Chunky Corgi next across the line he goes P4 Static Hazard though he's on a lap right now here comes it's heavy towards the line he does go a 139.63 Two. So one one thousandth of a second slower, it seems, than his best time there as uh, he's going to be remaining in P2. It's all going to come down to Static Hazard as well as Houdini, but Houdini has an invalidation, so that's going to be the end of his qualifying. But Static Hazard sets up purple second sector, one tenth faster than his previous lap time so he's gonna have to find more through sector three if he wants to get that pole position the likes of valentine it's heavy 
sitting here anxiously awaiting who is going to get pole position here in Baku as a Static heads towards the line. What's the time going to be? He is going to go only third fastest. He does not improve. It's a 139.710. Now, it looks like that's the second driver to go 11,000 slower than his previous lap time so he's going to remain in p3 and that is going to do it here for this qualifying session as it is going to be valentine who's starting on pole it's heavy in the ferrari coming in second with the static hazard having a fantastic lap a fantastic debut i should say here in division three as uh, he rounds out p3 rounds out the uh, the top three here in um, in this qualifying session and uh, that'll do it here and uh, one more time through the order here valentine on pole a 139.415 quick enough for a uh, pole position here it's heavy came close but not close enough he's going to be starting on the front row of the grid at least in second static hazard close as well in third chunky corgi up into p4 so he came to race here today for sure did uh, did chunky corgi uh crustier t in that williams uh top five there on his debut love to see that with houdini in sixth dissection in seventh uh nitwit in eighth unholy red eye in ninth and uh clogmonger rounding out the top 10 now unholy red eye keep an eye out on that mercedes driver uh riding a uh, riding a very big high there after the um after the very um, uh, positive outcome for him in Spa. He's on those medium tires, and uh, that is uh, that's another uh, that's a top ten showing there. So possibly an optimal tire strategy for um, for the uh, Alpha Tori driver there, as uh, he gets to start the race on the mediums, go a little bit longer than the rest of the field who are on the soft tires. But That'll do it here for qualifying as we've got sunny skies here for the race. I'm just going to take a quick sip of water. So I'll be back in just a moment to take us through the formation lap and the start of the race here. Alrighty, so we are here ready for the start of the race. Just getting ready for the, uh, just getting ready to kick things off. Awaiting for the uh, the queue to uh, the queue to hit that ready up button. Get things set up. Now uh, I know through qualifying I went through the drivers, didn't really touch the constructors as um, I didn't quite have the time for it. But uh, this seems like about as good a time as any to run through that. It's uh, going into the race, it is the team at Red Bull Racing leading the constructors 204 points. Now McLaren very close behind with 192 and the Williams rounding out top three there with 179. Mercedes in fourth, 149, 10 points behind them. The Alfa Romeo with uh, 139 points. Ferrari, two points behind them with uh, 137 points. And Haas, two points behind them with 135 points. So you can see how close the, uh, the Constructors' Championship is here as uh, we have passed the midway point of the season. And... Uh, here around Baku, this can really shake up the order if drivers are not careful. Because it's one thing to get one lap in here around Baku. But it's a completely other thing to get um, what I believe is uh, 26 laps here perfect around this circuit without breaking your front wing once without uh, running into uh, any incidents but um, it's all to play for it's all going to kick off here in just a moment as uh, valentine leading the way here around the formation lap let's get that tire choice up and uh, we'll take a look at the strategies and uh, right off the uh, right off the top of my head looks like a lot of drivers uh, outside of the top 10 at least uh, running a, a very similar strategy to one another. We'll get to that in uh, just a few moments. But one more time through the order. Valentine starting on pole in that Renault leading the way on the softs. It's heavy. P2 on the soft. Static Hazard. Chunky Corgi. 
Crestier T rounding out the top five with Houdini, Dissection, and Nitwit. The top eight all on the soft tires as they set their fastest lap in qualifying on those tires. Unholy Red Eye uh, having a little bit of a moment there on the formation lap, trying to get some heat in those medium tires. He's going to be starting in P9, and uh, the Mercedes driver to keep an eye out. Uh, apologies for that. It is the Mercedes driver on those medium tires. The Alfa Romeo of uh, Clogmonger rounding out the top 10 on the soft tires here. Uh, now, best of the rest, poor man's pole position, capital 58 in the second Renault uh, car. He is on those hard tires, so it's going to go a long way here. And uh, it looks like VTech on the mediums in 12, Subtle But Hole on the softs in 13, Spaceman on the hards in 14th, C Freeman on the hards in 15th, Racing Ginger opting for the mediums as you've got the uh, the hard tire predicted pit stop strategy. Uh, hard to softs is what I think most drivers are going to go for here. Uh, Team B7 Racing on the hards, Kaz on the hards, and Pocket Rocket from the back of the field on the hard tires as well. Now, uh, a lot of these hard tire runners, you're going uh, a little bit of a high risk, high reward here around Baku because on paper, in theory, fantastic strategy choice. Start on the hards, gain that track position and pit for softs right at the end of the race and be on that optimal tire. But, and this is a, a big but there, so to say. <laughs> I make myself laugh. But um, uh, a big, uh, a big but it's uh, is that it's going to work only if, and a big if. You can keep the car clean and keep the car out of the walls as you see your soft tire predicted pit stop strategy. Soft to hards or soft medium softs. I think um, uh, actually in my experience uh, either one of the strategies work. They tend to converge uh, and create a little bit of a similar pace here. Just depends on how drivers are with their tire management, how they are with... Um, with all of that, uh, all that wonderful stuff with the pace, fuel management, we'll see how everything plays out here as the drivers are lined up, waiting for the five red lights for 26 laps around Baku, up to three lights, four lights, five red lights. And the lights are off and we are racing here in Baku as uh, we head towards turn one, a short run up to turn one. We've got three wide there in the midfield there. It's Chunky Corgi trying to get past. It looks like a crustier T remaining in P, uh, P6. Team B7 racing it's showing there up into P2. Not necessarily the case as uh, Valentine still leading the way. It's heavy down in second but being pressured by Static Hazard. Crustier T though having a lot of pressure here but you can see a little bit of a side-by-side -side battle just about there. Looks like uh, Crustier T, Chunky Corgi looking to get at it as uh, it looks like a lot of single file drivers uh, taking a lot of caution here in these uh, beginning stages but Static Hazard getting ahead of its heavy. Here's a moving oh no there's contact but uh, it looks like through there Static Hazard almost being half spun but then being uh, knocked right back on track there from its heavy. So a little bit of a gift but a little bit of a, a non-gift there as there's some front wing end play down. Oh no! And right as I saw that crust your T running into the wall right before the castle section you gotta watch out here as uh, oh no and there's more contact there as uh, all drivers are getting together we've got uh, a little bit of yellow flags through the castle section here in turn one nitwit down in p13 right now as he's chasing down vtech as it uh, looks like uh, we had a little bit of a, a roadblock in that castle section i should say turn one uh, chaotic as it normally is here around baku but for the most part, you gotta say it's a bit of a successful lap one up until this point. Oh no! And who is that? A big tank slapper there for Racing Ginger, I believe, as a pocket rocket getting ahead. Clogmonger, Crustier T falling down the order. We've got yellow flags here. What's happening here with these yellow flags? As I think that was Nitwit having a little bit of a moment. Dissection getting ahead of Chunky Corgi. Nitwit going very slowly through this section. Watch out there as Racing Ginger and Spaceman get ahead. It's Heavy taking a pit stop. As the order is changing here, we've got um, It's Heavy in the pits. Crustier T in the pits. But for the most part, most of the drivers making it through lap one relatively cleanly here. As uh, we've got Capital chasing down the Ferrari of Houdini uh, for what is uh, going to be what uh, what I believe is uh, P3. 
but my uh, my order is uh, completely bonkers, so actually I don't think it is P3. One thing though I can say for certain is that uh, Valentine has a very comfortable lead here in these early stages. He just ran off off the start, created a gap, and uh, he's now uh, essentially forcing the other drivers to push to try to catch up. But Static Hazard, he's shown a lot of pace in qualifying. We'll see if he can uh, keep that up there as he's got a little bit of a gap to work with here. As Chunky Gorgie chasing down in uh, in third position as uh, my orders are finally getting sorted out here. A little bit more. We've got yellow flags. Oh no, let's head down the Oh my goodness, a big moment, a big roadblock here. As C. Freeman facing the wrong way. He's got to get around. We've got a virtual safety car. Thank goodness for that as Racing Ginger needs to get by and that's Kaz trying to get by Spaceman gets ahead uh, finally things have been sorted out but that's a big time loss there for a lot of drivers who were essentially stuck with nothing to do as uh, C. Freeman retiring out of this session what happened to C. Freeman oh no and that's C. Freeman with a uh, essentially a broken tire there a broken car I believe and uh, very early on here on lap uh, lap two lap three that is, uh, we are down to 18 drivers remaining in this Grand Prix. As, uh, oh my goodness, what happened there? That is heavy with a big moment. As, uh, right as I was taking a moment, trying to look down to chat there just to see what was going on. Uh, get a bit of an idea. He gets back on track, but a big time loss for, uh, for It's Heavy. Meanwhile, Capital is uh, watching a nice battle between Subtle But Whole and Houdini. Let's keep an eye out on this as they're going side by side. Houdini gets the inside line and it's going to be Subtle though who finds the trash on the exit. Houdini had a tank slapper. That's actually going to allow Capital to maybe make a move there. But uh, the corner came just a little bit too quickly as Capital is going to play it safe, going to remain in P7. Don't want to force a move in this stage of the race as it's only lap 3 out of 26. Loads of time to uh, to gain or lose positions, especially for Capital, who's on those hard tires, and he knows that he's going to get track position sooner rather than later once these soft tire runners have to pit. His race is uh, essentially with Unholy Red Eye more than anybody else who's up in P4 right now, having a fantastic race and doing a great job keeping it clean and uh, working with that end plate damage that I just caught on my uh, on my screen there but um, uh, there we go a little bit of a, a track limit extension as uh, we've got more of a yellow flag that's uh, it looks like another Alpha Tori Clogmonger facing the wrong way as that must have been a little bit of a tank slapper for the Alpha Tori driver he is down in P15 and that's gonna bring out a full safety car Whew. Take a breather, everybody. I know I'm going to have to take one here after loads of action there for the first four laps. But we are under full safety car. Somebody who's probably not happy about that at all is Valentine as he gets to watch Chunky Corgi in P2. Dissection who is down in P3. A subtle Unholy Red Eye. Houdini all taking pit stops here. Unholy Red Eye having to serve... Uh, Possibly a penalty there. Not too sure. Uh, possibly a holdup, though, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, now that I is observe a little bit further. But um, uh, that is uh, a safety car here to start lap four for what I can only assume was a clogmonger who was um, essentially uh, perpendicular to the track, uh, having a little bit of a, a moment there on the exit, maybe getting a little bit too uh, angsty on the acceleration pedal. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a hold up there as drivers are getting past the uh, the safety car, awaiting for the leader. Now, crucially though, Valentine does have a nice gap, uh, 16 seconds, but um, uncrucially, he was unable to take a pit stop as he had already passed the pit lane entrance. Uh, uncompared to, uh, I mean, I should say compared to uh, everybody else who was essentially in P2, P3 and onwards, as they had not passed the pit lane entrance, they were able to essentially take a pit stop under safety car. Now, uh, one of the uh, the interesting strategy calls, if I'm going to be honest here, is Unholy Red Eye, who uh, pit off of his medium tires to put on, look at that, another set of medium tires. So, um... I'm not too sure what the call was there. I think uh, Unholy Red Eye may be committing to the two-stop strategy here. Mediums, mediums, ride those out and either hope for another safety car or uh, possibly pit for a set of soft tires near the end of the race. 
and uh, essentially continue onwards with that strategy he was running from the beginning of the race but just with a uh, essentially a brand new set of medium tires that he can take much longer than the rest now for capital he's up into p2 right now he's going to be staying out on those soft tires you see valentine pitting for the mediums as uh, capital playing uh uh, slowing down a little bit there coming through turn one he will take the lead of the race as uh, Valentine is coming out only just behind his teammate so we do have a, uh, a Renault 1-2 here for lap 5 but it's going to be uh, the Renault of Capital who's going to be leading the race now whether or not Capital is uh, going to put up too much of a fight on Valentine once the uh, once the safety car does restart that remains to be seen uh, once we do get into the restart here under safety car I should say but uh, all questions will be answered in due time once we do head back but the order for now is Capital um, in the Renault in P1, Valentine in second, so a Renault 1-2 with the uh, McLaren of Chunky Corgi, who's uh, in P3 right now, so running fantastic here, looking for uh, a little bit of redemption after last season, you love to see that. And then you've got the two racing points of Dissection and Static Hazard, P4, P5, so the racing points having a race here early on in this stage. Then you've got the lead Ferrari of Houdini, Dini, who's uh, on the hard tires, so could very possibly go to the end of the race. Although those tires are going to be screaming at him here uh, by the end. I can say that out of experience. Uh, so uh, it is a strategy he can run. Not too sure if he's going to want to run that though, but currently in P6. So we'll see how that plays out. Unholy Red Eye down in 7th, so still gaining 2 positions. Racing Ginger in 8th. Kaz up in ninth as uh, he stayed out on those uh, hard tires, so he gained a lot there, just keeping it clean, so that strategy working out for him, and uh, Subtle But Hole rounding out the top ten, and then uh, something we're not used to seeing, the Red Bull, ooh, a big moment there for VTech under safety car, trying to put some heat in those uh, hard tires. Uh, we caught that on stream, and uh, VTech may be uh, hoping that wasn't caught on stream there. That's some end plate damage, and that may or may not be another pit stop for the Ferrari driver. Just as I was saying, uh, seeing them down in P11, not uh, where we're used to seeing the uh, the uh, the Red Bulls, not the Ferraris, um, um, the Red Bull drivers there, but um, that's uh, where they find themselves. And uh, for VTech, uh, from bad to worse, as uh, he's going to continue on. No, actually, he is going to dive into the pits, so uh, we'll fall a little bit more. As uh, Crestier T now up into 11th, Pocket Rocket up into 12th position. Uh, Nitwit will be in uh, 13th, I believe, and that should be Team B7 Racing and its heavy in 14th and 15th with the order coming down from there but uh like i mentioned we are under safety car here on lap six of the azerbaijan grand prix here at baku city circuit i'm gonna take a quick moment here as uh, we're watching the uh we're watching the renault drivers uh, lead the way watching uh, bert mylander lead another lap add to his uh, a record of laps led here um i'm gonna take a quick sip of water and i'll be back in just a few moments to uh, to continue the stream here Alrighty, I am back. Thank you so much for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. I have had my sip of water. I've taken my uh, my pit stop, so to say, here under safety car. Uh, but we are back to racing. Those lights are still on with the uh, with the safety car. A little bit of a distance is being left for Capital. Uh, that's what you want to be doing in this session as uh, you don't want to be causing a slowdown here. Uh, but we'll keep an eye out uh, with Spaceman who's catching up to the back of the field. We'll see if uh, the safety car is going to do another lap await for him or whether or not um, uh, it is going to come in here at the end of this lap. I believe we are doing one more lap under safety car. 
but it should be coming in next lap, um, uh, if I'm being completely honest. Just gotta wait for Spaceman to catch up to the grid after taking a, uh, a pit stop here to get down into P18, but has a, a brand new, fresh set of medium tires on that Mercedes car, but uh, going to have his work cut out for him here. Starting lap 7 out of 26, 19 laps to go. Uh, we are under safety car. As I've said before, a bit of a familiar sight here around uh, Baku. Uh, definitely a track that is known to bring out these um, these vehicles of safety, so to say, as uh, Pocket Rocket is uh, taking a pit stop. He's going to get off of those medium tires. So uh, might need to uh, might need to take a, a little bit of a push there. Um, uh, because I do believe a uh, safety car will be coming in at the end of this lap, regardless of, um, of if drivers have caught up or not. But uh, he's leaving the pits now on a fresh set of medium tires, and essentially he's going to be caught right back up to the grid anyways. So um, getting those fresh tires on, uh, not losing too, too much, but he's got everything to gain just being on that slightly more optimal strategy uh, here on that fresher set of mediums, which... Um, I don't believe can go to the end, but they do open up that possibility uh, if there is a, a second safety car later on in the race, or even if there isn't, just a pit for, uh, for a fresh set of soft tires here near the end of the uh, near the end of the Grand Prix near the end of the race but as mentioned it's lap seven under safety car here uh, heading through the uh, the castle section with the uh, the Renault drivers leading the way the two uh, the two reserves here in the uh, in the Renault who are um, who are leading here in this Grand Prix so something uh, something you really like to see and something uh, you don't really see every day here around Baku uh, the um, the reserves leading or uh, essentially at any um, any race here but uh, we'll see for how long that is going to last Valentine who's currently in second in the early stages under green flag was looking absolutely on fire will he be able to keep it up here under this safety car restart as safety car is going to be coming in this lap capital will become the de facto safety car he is going to lead the charge lead the safety car restart you can see he's getting some heat into his tires here and uh, once we do get um, essentially uh, close to the line it's when we're going to be restarting i do believe uh, capital is going to take this a long way he's going to take this uh, possibly uh very slowly up until the line or uh, try to time this um, as well as he possibly can here for the uh, for the restart uh oh vtech and uh, Clogmonger are getting involved with something as uh, there's a severe collision there and VTech is um, a little bit further down the order, down in 18th, but it looks like uh, now he, Capital is going as uh, he crosses the line. Valentine getting a nice start here as he might try to overtake his teammate as um, uh, we've got yellow flags in the back. Oh no! And the, Oh, a big moment there! It's Chunky Corgi into turn one. He's facing the wrong way, has to get around. I was caught with the yellow flags further down. Big move. Uh, Movements there as um, the safety car restart has caused a little bit of chaos here. Dissection is leading this race here. The racing point finds himself in P1. Valentine in second. Gonna try possibly an overtake, but he's got to watch out as Static is down in third. Capital finds himself down in P4 after starting this race, uh, after restarting in P1, but he's got heavy wing damage, and that's gonna be a pit stop. So not ideal for uh, for Capital as uh, he's going to have to wait a long time in that pit box to get that wing change. And uh, not ideal in this battle as it is now Racing Point, Renault, Racing Point, Renault. But uh, with Houdini very close behind on those soft tires as they head towards the castle section. Another sa a virtual safety car has come out though. What, uh, what brought this out here? As um, uh, my question is uh, remaining unanswered, I'm going to head down the order as, uh, oh my goodness, uh, VTEC slowing way down here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out maybe uh, Clogmonger taking some wing damage, leaving some debris on the circuit that's got to get cleaned up there. So uh, for, Sa uh, for Capital, I should say, this could be a blessing depending on when this uh, virtual safety car does go away. If he can just manage to get through this, these final few corners, there he can essentially get home free towards the uh, pit lane minimize the time lost here 
with that um, uh, with that virtual safety car, but the top three have absolutely run away here thanks to that wing damage from Capital, as uh, they are all uh, already four seconds ahead of the uh, the rest of the field under virtual safety car. There you go. You see Capital taking that pit stop there very quickly falling down the uh, the order and uh, now we are under green flag racing the top three are heading back as they're heading towards turn two we've got more yellow flags here as i believe that's nitwit uh, having a little bit of a moment maybe clipping a wall what's going on here with um uh, a big uh, gaggle of cars i should say uh, approaching turn two heading down houdini's involved unholy red eyes up in the p4 racing to turn p5 the two ferraris might want to get at it there you don't don't want to be battling too hard with your teammate a tank slapper that's not going to help right behind though Kaz and Subtle are getting involved very possibly with a move uh, that was a team B7 racing of a little bit of a tank slapper on the exit of uh, turn four I believe they're approaching turn five the uh, the two Ferraris are very close to one another are they going to exchange positions yes they are it's heavy up into P6 going very deep though almost uh, creating contact with his team made heading into the castle section now but Houdini has some end plate damage he's gonna have to deal with and that's a gun he's gonna have to watch out though subtle but hole he's got a clean wing for now and he's gonna be trying to get an overtake actually now that I say that subtle has a little bit of end plate damage from what I saw on that car so it's all gone off here with the safety car restart pocket rocket he's coming very close to team b7 racing well right on board can he find the traction he needs He's going to try a lunge on the inside, maybe, no, but he finds the inside line there. It's Team B7 Racing going a little bit deep. They're side by side, and the move does happen as a Pocket Rocket heads up into P10. All the while, Valentine up, uh, taking the lead of the race as uh, the two racing points are going side by side now. You don't want to make contact with your teammate there as the Dissection up into P2, Static Hazard up into P3. As um, I'm losing my voice here very early on in the race, so much is happening. Kaz and Subtle are going side by side here, it looks like. Or Kaz and Pocket Rocket, I should say. Oh, that was a little bit of a chop up there, as it seems, as uh, Kaz uh, making turn two. As uh, Team B7 Racing um, very quickly got ahead, but Pocket Rocket gets right back ahead. A very early break for uh, Team B7 Racing heading into turn three, as the uh, crustier team makes an overtake to go up into P9. This midfield, oh my goodness, oh no! And that's some, um, uh, it looks like Pocket Rocket having a moment, hitting, um, uh, tapping Crustier T, I believe. Uh, it's all gone off there. I'm losing track of these names. We are under safety car, as um, you saw that on stream. I just don't know who it was with all these names, so apologies that I can't uh, go in depth as I normally do with these incidents. But it appears as though, well, I think it was Pocket Rocket, who um, uh, took the corner, had a tank slapper, and through no fault of its own, ended up running in, uh, ended up tapping the Red Bull, and uh, from there was just a domino effect, which uh, essentially brought out the safety car. But here, under lap 10, back under safety car, Valentine, that's uh, one thing that's, um, uh, that we can say is uh, relatively the same from the previous safety car. Valentine leading the race, uh, but actually, I just noticed Nitwit is out of this uh, is out of this grand prix now uh, that's uh, that is uh, uh oh um uh, that's nitwit who uh, may or may not have retired on track because i do see the um uh, i do see an um a williams car that is uh, heading towards the runoff there on turn three on the mini map but uh, if you are going to retire that car you're gonna want to do that in the pits you don't want to be retiring on track even though we are under safety car, um, I do believe that is in the rule book here. And just generally speaking, even if it isn't, uh, personal opinion here under safety car, um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a firm believer of retiring in the pit lane, so that car does not uh, get out of the way. But I don't, I don't want to be pointing fingers. I can't, I can't assume for sure. 
for all I know, Nitwit did retire in the pit lane, and uh, that could just be where that uh, where that runoff area is uh, to get that car out of the way. It did not affect anybody, so it's something that uh, maybe we'll have to take a look at the VOD just to be certain. I can't say for sure, but um, uh, if any drivers are watching this here, um, uh, moral of that story, moral of that um, um, of that line. If you want to retire the car early, which um, I normally don't advise. Uh, on, under any circumstance just retire it in the pit lane so much easier for everybody uh, rather than retiring it out on track and uh, possibly letting your AI oh, a bit of a brake check there um, uh, as uh, we're heading into the castle section some five second penalties for uh, severe collisions being handed off not what you like to be seeing there as uh, you can't even uh, get frustrated at anybody for that distance was left but um, uh, when the uh, when the corner before the castle section becomes um, essentially a, a Tesco parking lot, so to say, or a um, a Kroger's parking lot, uh, since we are a, a, a essentially a North American league more than uh, anything else here, um, uh, those things are bound to happen. Uh, but not ideal as uh, those five second penalties can definitely add up when they are added to your time here at the end of the uh, at the end of the race. But here we are under safety car, and oh, what happened to Spaceman as uh, he's falling down the order? Uh-oh, he's uh, facing uh, perpendicular to the track. He gets that uh, Mercedes around as uh, he may need to take a pit stop to fix that front wing. And uh, it seems like for some of these drivers, uh, this uh, Baku City circuit, as mentioned, uh, if you're able to keep it clean, you're uh, you're having a good time here. As some um, uh, some drivers have been able to uh, to manage the uh, the streets of Baku, uh, some uh, not so much here. Um, and now I know uh, once again in my personal experience as a racer, uh, when I had my league race here around Baku, I put in I think uh, I think it was about um, and uh, hold on something I think it was 250 laps over the course of the week of of time trial alone just to make sure that when I came to race time I had my breaking points down packed and I did not hit those walls and uh, I mean the grind worked out for me uh, at the end um, I'm not going to uh, don't worry for those watching I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to slightly sly in to go watch my league race around Baku. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll let y'all find that uh, if you really want to be seeing it, because uh, it was a good one. But uh, you know what else is a good one? This race around Baku that we're watching here. So uh, definitely don't tune away. Stick by it. We are under safety car, but we are gonna head back to green flag racing soon enough. As um, I'm just, uh, I'm just having a little bit of fun here in the commentators booth. Um, while we are here under safety car but to prep myself for the restart as uh, Kaz is leading the way here on those 11 lap old hard tires once again a quick sip of water I will be back and uh, hopefully take us through the restart um, uh, that very well could be at the end of this lap Alrighty, I am back here, ladies and gentlemen. I caught that uh, as I was taking my uh, my sip of water. I think uh, it's heavy. I had a little bit of a moment in the castle section. Uh, looks like he got that resolved, but that might be a pit stop for the uh, Ferrari driver as uh, his race not necessarily going the way he wanted it to there. But as the safety car will be going around for no more laps as a very late call from the uh, from the marshals here in Azerbaijan to bring that safety car in uh, it's heavy probably not too too happy about that given uh, what had just happened but uh, we are heading back to green flag racing 
You can see there drivers lining up. It's looking to be an IndyCar start almost, but here we go. Kaz is uh, very quickly heading off. Valentine, though, very quickly trying to make an overtake, and he goes ahead and takes the lead right back on those fresh uh, medium tires. Kaz going very deep there into turn one just about, trying to come right back, and he does make it work, though, as he retakes the lead of the race under the safety car restart. Further behind, you've got uh, Racing Ginger falling down the order here as everybody's trying to head through. That was uh, R Unholy Red Eye, I believe, who was uh, going very, very slow through uh, turn two. You've got It's Heavy and VTech going side by side as they are drag racing down. And uh, oh no, what happened there? That's Static Hazard through turn three. He had a big moment there as he's still facing the wall and he needs to get back on track. Oh no, and that Static Hazard disqualified out of the session for facing the wrong way. Heartbreak for the Racing Point driver who was running so well for so long, but due to no fault of his own, he's just trying to be he's just trying to be good guy static hazard let drivers through not get in the way but unfortunately the uh, the marshals they didn't like that they um, I guess they wanted him to back into the other cars I don't agree with that one bit but um, unfortunately for Static Hazard, he is out of this race due to a, disqual oh, a disqualification But VTEC. Right as I was saying that, you saw VTEC with a big tank slapper. And that's some heavy wing damage for the Ferrari. Spinning that car around. And he's lucky not to lose that tire spinning the car around into the wall. But it's a long way to the pits. And a, a lowly race for the Red Bull drivers here. Uh, meanwhile, you've got a nice little side-by-side -side battle here between Pocket Rocket and uh, Dissection. Subtle But Whole got a nice little run on Kaz as he's falling down the order. As it's a drag race here between Subtle and Dissection. It's Subtle who makes a second overtake. Is he going to get a third one here on Pocket Rocket? He's got to go the long way around. Yes, he does. But hang on a minute. It was nearly three wide there through turn one between the Ferraris. The, uh, the Alfa Romeo, the Racing Point, they're all getting together here under this, uh, under this lap here to start lap 14. Chunky Corgi, he's going to try to overtake the Ferrari, and he does very uh, temporarily, and he, uh, well, a little bit more permanently now gets ahead of the Ferrari, heading into turn three side by side. It is going to be Chunky Corgi who gets the overtake done as he is up into P8 now. Eighth place for the McLaren. Houdini and Kaz switching positions. And it looks like for Kaz, those hard tires are, uh, have hit that cliff. He is just falling. He was in P1 under the safety car restart in a lowly P7 as we have a yellow flag for uh, a Mercedes who went deep in turn two. He's going to get back on track. It's only going to be yellow flags. Very close there does, uh, does Kaz as he nearly went uh, deep into the castle section, creating more chaos here. But uh, under pressure from Chunky Corgi, there you go. It's, uh, the, it's the McLaren of Chunky Corgi up into P7. Kaz down in P8 now as it's heavy is going to chase. And uh, for Kaz, I think he's going to have to take a pit stop here. Those hard tires, that strategy not working the way he wanted it to here, I think as he initially chalked it up as now you can see he's going side by side with it's heavy and it's heavy very quickly making quick work of the uh, Alfa Romeo so Kaz falling down as Valentine says the fastest lap of the Grand Prix and uh, he's got a six second gap we had a, a little drag race there as uh, Crustier T getting ahead of Kaz and uh, I think um, Kaz is uh, heeding, uh, heeding our advice here or uh, realizing himself that that wasn't going to work. He's taking a pit stop. Subtle but whole though. He made a nice little overtake on Capital. He goes up into P2 now. That's Subtle up into second place in Pocket Rocket making an overtake on Capital. Capital losing out on two positions in the span of a corner and a straight and nearly a third one as Dissection is putting a lot of pressure here on those hard tires chasing down the Renault, uh, she's now the Renault of Capital. Two tenths behind. He thought about making a move down the inside, but thought better of it as uh, this uh, corner section, not one you normally make a move barring a mistake. Capital, though, I think uh, the nerves have settled. He found that traction here, and he's going to remain in P4 for the time being as uh, definitely not going to be an overtake here around the castle section.
Um, uh, it looks like Chunky Corgi chasing down Houdini. Those soft tires are working pretty well for uh, for Chunky so far here in this race as we are on lap 15 out of 26. 11 laps to go just like that of this Grand Prix that is uh, essentially flown by. I feel like I say that every week. I feel like I say that at every race, but... The racing is just so good, so fantastic here that uh, it's true every week that is flying by. And uh, this week around Baku, it is uh, absolutely no different. But uh, Valentine leading the way, that gap is growing. It's looking more and more like it's going to be his race to lose as uh, Subtle is in second trying to chase down. But um, uh, he's got a long ways to go. Pocket Rocket pitting off of those hard tires, so he's falling down the order. That's Capital and Dissection going side by side as uh, they are still side by side. Capital hanging on to that P3 as Dissection is still in fourth, but Dissection is going to have DRS to work with. Capital trying to break the toe. Dissection, he's sticking with his line and look at the pace difference between the two. That's the difference DRS makes as he gets ahead. Now Houdini and Chunky Corgi are getting at it, but it's heavy is here for support on his teammate. Chunky can't focus entire, entirely excuse me, on the driver ahead because one wrong move and that Ferrari behind will make that overtake and he's going to have not one but two Ferraris have to try to overtake. So uh, Chunky's going to have to play this uh, very patiently. He's going to have to bide his time, plan that move accordingly Possibly with DRS if he can uh, get it done here. Uh, maybe on the end of next lap if he's got enough ERS in the tank. But uh, crucially Houdini ahead has a lot more ERS to work with. And uh, it's heavy as well has a lot to work with. So uh, Chunky not in the best of positions here in uh, in this stage of the race to, uh, to possibly make that overtake work and stick. Uh, but they are catching up the capital who seems to be losing pace to dissection who is uh, up into a podium position up into p3 with this fantastic helicopter cameras you're watching the racing point coming through the uh, the sweeping section of sector three heading towards the long back straight we've got a nice little view of baku there as uh, just for a brief moment here comes houdini now gonna try to overtake capital as uh, will he get the overtake done yes he does well before turn one houdini up into p4 it's heavy though getting ahead of chunky corgi is he's gonna fall down a position to p7 so uh, unfortunately for Chunky, that position is lost, but only for a corner though, as this heavy goes deep. Chunky Gorgi plans that move much better. He uh, comes right back, re-overtakes, and gets DRS to boot too to help with uh, trying to close that gap on Capital. It's heavy meanwhile. He breaks a little bit later and uh, does close up a little bit of time, but uh, he's going to have to... Uh, I think park that Ferrari behind the McLaren for at least a lap, live with the dirty air, and uh, once again try to push with DRS uh, down the uh, the long back straight as uh, we saw one lap ago, which is the uh, the primary ideal overtaking spot here around uh, this Baku City circuit. If you can uh, nail Sector 2 cleanly, and we have a virtual safety car. What happened here? As uh, let's quickly uh, let's head down the order. Valentine looking clean. Uh, Subtle's looking all right. Uh, Spaceman and uh, oh no, that's uh, Crustier T having a big moment as uh, he is pulling into the escape road. And uh, is that going to be uh, possibly? No, he's just uh, trying to get that car around, doing what he has to do there to uh, to get that car around with no front wing. There we go. Uh, so that very well could have been the cause of the virtual safety car as uh, I think uh, Crestier T a little bit of a mistake going through the castle section um uh, don't feel uh, don't you don't you can't feel too bad about that uh, if you crest your T as um uh, the castle section really uh, really gets the uh, you know gets the most of even the best of drivers um uh, one that I can uh, one that comes to mind is um uh, everybody's um 
the uh, the lovable Ferrari driver of Charles Leclerc a couple of years ago with the uh, oh so famous um, I am stupid line so don't feel bad at all that castle section one of the most difficult corners on the entirety of the F1 calendar rivaled uh, possibly only by uh, turn 13 I believe it is right at the end of sector 2 and uh, uh oh Chunky Corgi taking a 5 second penalty for crossing the white line on the exit of the pit lane that's not what you like to see there at all not ideal as uh, we are back to green flag racing is going to be added to his time and uh, capital is uh, ahead now of chunky corgi but chunky is uh, going to be chasing down with that fresh set of boots that fresh wing and or i believe it was a fresh wing but maybe just the fresh set of boots the fresh set of soft tires uh with that virtual safety car he's gonna try to uh, push as much as he can regain those uh, those positions he lost after uh, after pitting and it all starts here capital meanwhile he's on a fresh set of tires too he is going to have to uh, he's going to want to try to hang on they're both going to try to close up to a pocket rocket who uh, is uh, putting a lot of pressure here on spaceman spaceman on those nine lap old hard tires running in p6 so the um, the mercedes driver having a good race so far but uh, with a lot of soft tire runners behind him, can he hold on? Uh, Pocket Rocket make a nice little lunge down the inside. Spaceman thought about uh, pulling a switchback move, but just couldn't find the traction on those hard tires. And meanwhile, the uh, the softs of Capital and Chunky Corgi, they are closing right back up. Five second gap, more like 3.3 and counting now for this um, uh, for that gap between uh, P7 and P8. But We've got a drag race here. Chunky Corgi with DRS. He gets ahead of Capital as uh, they exchange positions. A purple sector to boot for Chunky Corgi as uh, he's flying right now. We've got a yellow flag here through sector uh, through uh, through turn one as uh, that was a little bit of a, a a moment there as Spaceman. What happened there? He's going very slow. I think he took wing damage. Maybe hit the outside. Yes, he did. He hit that outside wall. Brought out that yellow flag and he is going very slow in the corner. So I think he's going to have to pit, get that front wing changed. Uh, but that is going to be a long pit stop off of those hard tires. But the good news is that he can put on a set of soft tires and theoretically go to the end of the race. But here on lap 19 out of 26, seven laps to go, approaching six laps to go. Valentine leading the way. Uh, Subtle but hold in second. They're kind of running their own race, the top two are. Dissection in third, trying to chip away at that um, at that 3.6 second gap. But uh, very close behind, you've got the two Ferraris of Houdini and It's Heavy. Uh, very much so working together, I believe, to try to close that gap up as much as they can. Helping each other, towing each other around the circuit here. We'll uh, keep an eye out on these Ferraris just to see how this is playing out. Let's, uh, let's ride on board. He's got ERS open. He's got DRS open. Houdini has no DRS, but I think he's maybe using some... Uh, no, not really using any DRS. He's just got a little bit more pace on those medium tires. But here we go. It's heavy getting ahead. They're going to try to battle a little bit. You got to be careful, though. You don't want to be making contact with your teammate as the positions have switched. Hopefully that's coordinated there for the Ferrari team. You don't want to be having a civil war in that Ferrari garage in this stage of the uh, of the season, especially when you're uh, when you're battling for the constructors uh, championship as well as uh, working for those uh, those driver championship points you've got a great opportunity here you don't want to uh, s you don't want to soil it kind of like uh, Leclerc and Vettel did uh, around I believe it was Brazil um, um, just uh, one year or two ago uh, but we'll have to keep an eye out on that but this uh, could be a decent battle brewing here with the uh, Ferraris on track as uh, they are trying to chase down dissection but uh, crucially with that um, um, they've uh, been able to close that gap up on the on dissection who's um, uh, essentially losing pace to the likes of uh, subtle who's up into uh, up into p2 right now those hard tires for dissection maybe not doing uh, doing as much work as he would like for um, uh, for the racing point driver uh, but it is it's heavy who's on those hard tires as well slightly more worn hard tires Team B7 Racing is in the uh, the pits here for the uh, the Red Bull team. 
putting on a fresh set of soft tires as he's going to try to push to the end of the race with those uh, with that fresh set of softs. Here we go. It's heavy. Closing. Closing. Not enough, though, but he gets nearly two tenths behind. Oh, no. A big moment there for uh, for It's Heavy as he nearly runs into the Red Bull coming around as he is uh, getting back on track now. Houdini getting ahead, but that is a lot of time lost for It's Heavy as uh, he was running up into P4. Thankfully, the only position that was lost was to his teammate of Houdini. So the uh, the Ferraris essentially re-switch positions, but not ideally the way they wanted to do it, um, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, a little bit further down the order, here comes Pocket Rocket in at P9, trying to chase down on Kaz. And uh, Kaz taking a wide line through turn two, uh, losing a lot of speed there on the exit compared to Pocket Rocket, who very quickly gets ahead to get up into P8 and uh, does not really look back there as uh, we got to look back for him and watch the uh, watch the gap grow between uh, Pocket Rocket and Kaz. And I've got to wonder, does Kaz maybe have a... No, there's no wing damage on that... Uh, on the uh, the Alfa Romeo, I think that just goes to show the difference between five lap old soft tires and uh, a fresh set of soft tires. As a uh, pocket rocket, he's going to try to continue that charge, but he's going to have seven and a half seconds to close up before he can possibly see the um and attempt to overtake Capital, who's um, sitting in P7. He's on uh, a fresh set of soft tires who can definitely go to the end of the race, but fighting with some uh, some end plate damage on that front wing. As you can see, that right-hand side front wing there, uh, missing that end plate, not ideal, and uh, we'll see how much that affects them as the gap is closing, 6.6 .6 seconds. Something to keep an eye out here between now and the end of the race. But... Here on lap 22, it is the Ferrari of Houdini still chasing down the uh, the racing point of dissection. You saw both of them on your screen there. Uh, we are focusing on Houdini, who's chasing down with those medium tires, and um, we'll see if um, we'll see if he can close up. He's got four laps to do it, four laps to close up and overtake. 1.5 seconds is the gap, and it appears to be closing uh, at least through this uh, first sector so we'll keep an eye out on this and see if uh, the move can possibly be done within uh, maybe between now and the end of next uh, the end of this lap and possibly uh, near the end of next lap here as uh, coming through the castle section still closing down to 1.1 seconds we brought it down to uh, right around just over a second but um, as expected, the gap, you'll see it'll close up. It'll grow depending on the, uh, the sections of the track we're going to. But the question is, when he hits the DRS detection zone, will he be able to close that gap to uh, under a second? Uh, odds point to no, at least in this stage, as uh, that is growing to 1.5 seconds. Dissection doing what he has to do there on those hard tires to hang on to that P3 for the time being. Um, it's Houdini pushing how he can using a little bit of ERS here and there uh, using it very sparingly you don't want to be running out all in one go you need some for the overtake uh, but that gap is uh, at 1.4 seconds here as we are starting lap 23 out of 26 three laps to go in this Grand Prix Valentine in P1 and look at the gap between Valentine and Subtle um, uh, we haven't given the uh, the lead Renault driver much love here in this race as Pocket Rockets says the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, a 142.3 to his name. But uh, like I said, we haven't given Valentine much love here uh, for the uh, for the lead. He's essentially just um, done uh, did what he had to do, uh, committed to the strategy, booked it. Uh, but, ooh, but this might uh, change things a little bit as uh, Unholy Red Eye, he is out of this race. Hang on a minute, where is that car of Unholy Red Eye? Is he in the pits or did he possibly crash out on the back straight? Let's ride on board with the crustier T as he's approaching the yellow flag zone. Where is that? Oh my goodness, that's Unholy Red Eye. Almost uh, nearly looking like Max Verstappen there in this, uh, in this Grand Prix without spoiling too much. Thankfully, though, it's not going to bring out any safety cars, any virtual safety cars, as I think now we are too close to the end of the race. 
uh, we do not have the capabilities to uh, call out a red flag and uh, bring out a possible standing start like we saw in uh, last weekend's um, race here. Uh-oh. As uh, things go from bad to worse, Subtle But Whole uh, disconnected from the session, I believe, as uh, he had left the session from P2. His car is still running, so hopefully he can get back into the session sooner rather than later. As uh, we're starting lap 24 out of 26, and uh, Dissection trying to close up. He sees his... Uh, his eyes probably lit up once he saw and hopefully saw that uh, that message as that uh, he is uh, chasing down for P2. He wants P2. He wants those points in the Drivers' Championship. And Houdini as well. He's closed that gap to under a second. And look at how quickly they closed up the Settle here um, uh, this late in the race. We've got to hope to see uh, Settle connecting back into the uh, connecting back into the session because uh, that can be very, uh, very costly. That could very well cost the uh, cost the McLaren driver a podium here on track uh, if that uh, happens here. Uh, but we'll see how that all plays out. That car, thankfully, coming through the castle section, so his uh, he's safe at least for a little bit. But dissection and Houdini are lurking. They are challenging here as uh, Valentine, that gap has um, essentially uh, very much so closed. But that, I believe, is because Valentine took a pit stop there. He wants to go for fastest lap of the Grand Prix, it seems. Let's quickly keep an eye out here. Here comes Dissection. Subtle but whole came back in. The question is, did he get control of his car? I'm trying to see here as the uh, Houdini now getting ahead. We're nearly three wide through this section. This could end very dangerously if we're not careful. Look at the skill of these drivers heading through that. Subtle down in P4 now. Here comes, um, that's a Team B7 racing. Going to try to unlap himself. The question is, as uh, we've got yellow flags in Sector 2 for VTech, as uh, he's facing the wrong way in the castle section. He's going to have to get back on track. The question is, though, has um, uh, Subtle But Hole connected back? Is he going to be able to push, try to snag that podium right back there? Or is it too little, too late? That's right on board. Um, uh, he is uh, very much... So that gap is really closing. So uh, I think it might be too little too late with that costly disconnect from Subtle, who um, uh, was just unable to uh, reconnect in time to uh, hang on to that position. He got back in, but uh, when he jumps back in, he's just in that pre-race lobby. He still has to load back into the race and then retake control of his car. We've got yellow flags here as um, uh, we've got um, a little bit of a... Um, uh, an incident here. I don't think uh, anything uh, too too crazy to worry about as um, I believe now Subtle does have control of his car as the uh, the pace looks to have returned and he is closing back up on Houdini so this might not be over just yet if uh, if he does have control of his car he's gonna have to push doesn't have much ERS to work with but if he can bring that gap to uh, less than a second we might have a race on our hands and uh, it would be uh, it would be very typical of Baku, uh, to say the least, if we end up getting a photo finish at the line here for the end of the race. But um, uh, Valentine getting the fastest lap of the Grand Prix as we are starting the final lap here. Or at least Valentine is most of everybody else heading towards the line to start their own final lap. Houdini chasing down dissection. Who's in P2? My gaps have returned finally to the uh, to the joy of myself in the commentators' booth. I have gaps once again to get an idea. It's heavy though. Uh, Subtle might have uh, bigger issues than trying to regain the podium as uh, he's got a Ferrari of this heavy who's uh, chasing down here. Lap 26 out of 26. The final lap of the. Excuse me, of the Grand Prix, they're close. A little bit of contact was made there through turn three. You don't want to be, um, uh, you don't want to be spinning out this late in the race. It's heavy. Does have wing damage though, uh, but is he going to be able to make an overtake? He might need to leave it for the drag race at the line. 
for Subtle, I think uh, that podium is um, all but done and dusted for him, barring a possible miracle here, which it is Baku after all, anything can happen through this section, but it looks like uh, Dissection and Houdini handle that very well, Valentine, he has not gotten much screen time, he has driven essentially a near perfect race, and it very well could be perfect if they can just nail these final few corners towards the line he goes. The final little scary moment for him as long as he doesn't lose control of the car. Celebrating on your screen there. It's all but done. Your race winner, Valentine, crosses the line. He is your winner here for the Renault team at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Dissection heading towards the line. Taking a little bit more of a straight line here and not taking anything for granted. He is going to come in second. And Houdini so close in third. We've got a drag race here. It's going to be It's Heavy who gets the P4 on the drag race at the end there. Subtle but whole was running so good. But that disconnect was the uh, the TSN turning point, so to say, for my, uh, my Canadian friends watching here. Um, and not in a good way for Subtle as he ends the race in P5. But still a solid finish. Pocket Rocket 6. Trunky Corgi in 7th. But a tenth of a second behind. Capital in P8 as he crossed the line. Here comes Racing Ginger now as he's heading towards the line. He should end up in P9 here on the track. Barring any crazy moments, any crazy punctures. Uh, so to say, knock on wood. There we go. To the line he goes. It is P9 for Racing Ginger. Kaz rounding out the top 10. And uh, Spaceman, he is going to have, he is going to get P11, the last of the lead lap cars. As I look towards the chat for Anomaly, that is Valentine, uh, who is in the chat. He is happy. He is hyped. You can see that there. A cap lock, yes, as uh, he is uh, very happy to get P1 here around Baku City Circuit. What a race to win out of all of them here. Pocket Rocket getting driver of the day after serving that qualifying ban, ending up in a top 10 position there. Fantastic drive from him as well this race. But there you have it. A nice little uh, moonwalk, a little bit of a dance there for, um, for, um, for Valentine as he takes the top step. The Renault, the Racing Point, the Ferrari, two Americans and a Canadian on the podium here for the uh, for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Congratulations to the podium. Congratulations uh, to you all. A fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, race here for um, in Baku. But some, um, of course, it's it's what it's the norm for Baku. But one more time. Through the order here, Valentine taking the victory here, Dissection in second, Houdini in third, It's Heavy uh, in fourth, Subtle Butt Hole from 13th up to 5th, so still a solid race, but uh, leaves what could have been Pocket Rocket pulling off the magical 5 stop from P19 to P6, you'll love to see that, uh, Chunky Corgi P7, Capital in 8th, Racing Ginger in 9th, and uh, Kaz from 18th up into a top 10 position there, Spaceman, VTech, uh, uh, Crust, uh, Crustier T, Team B7 Racing, Unholy Red Eye rounding out the top 15, Static Hazard, Nitwit, Clogmonger, C Freeman, the rest of the order there on your screen. Just so we get a view, uh, head back to the top there as uh, I've got to uh, take note of the uh, of the podium there because uh, after that um, after that race here around uh, Baku, I am uh, definitely going to want to get a little bit of input. As uh, oh my goodness, uh, are you kidding me? That uh, that completely uh, disappeared from my uh, that completely disappeared from my uh, my screen before I could even. Uh, or I could even get that there. So I believe uh, it was. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, uh, chat. Can you help me out here with the uh, with the podium? I know we've got Valentine 
Um, uh, but the uh, the rest of the podium, I'm actually blanking on here. Um, apologies for that, as um, uh, I did not get my uh, I did not get my view in time. Uh, meanwhile, though, I will get um, I will get Valentine into the uh, in the post race interview, so I can get uh, so I can get at least his thoughts um, uh, on that um, on that race here around uh, around Baku, that fantastic race. So let's get into the showroom. Let's get the uh, the reno on your screen and i'll be back as i get the uh, as i get the invites sent off Alrighty, so I got the invite sent off to Valentine. Um, uh, like I mentioned, uh, due to a, a huge mistake on my end, I did not get my uh, the rest of the podium notes in time. Maybe uh, I'll take a quick peek at the uh, maybe at the Discord if they can uh, if they can help me out here just a little bit uh, because um, uh, I did a tiny little bit of an oopsie. Oh, of course, where does I switch over? Um, uh, but there we go. That has been the race. We'll see if uh, do we have uh, Valentine in. Yes, we do have Valentine here. Can you he hear us at all? Uh, I can hear you. Can the stream hear me? Uh, I actually don't have the stream open. Uh, but uh, do you have your? Uh, do you have that? Uh, do you have your? Oh my goodness! The voice chair set to uh, the way it should be. <laughs> I, I'm actually still in the stream. I turned the volume up a little bit. I should be good to go. Yeah. Perfect. So, a fantastic race from you. Um, uh, I'll be honest. Um, I don't want to say uh, not too much to talk about, but um, fantastic qualifying. Got the lap together and uh, just consistency for you all throughout. But to uh, talk us through it, what were your thoughts here after that um, fantastic race on your end? Well, I had done a little bit of practice before the race, and I, I was feeling pretty good. And um, as soon as I went out and I tried my first um, my first lap, I unfortunately made a little bit of contact, I think, in the castle section or coming out of it, and uh, I had to abandon the lap. But I was setting purple first and second sector, so I was pretty confident there. I just pit really quick and tried to get out on some minimal fuel. And sure enough, I was able to uh, come back pretty strong. I set the set my pole lap. For, I think I believe that's the first one uh, in Midwest F1. And um, from there, it was all just pretty much uh, head down and uh, drive as fast as I could. <laughs> yeah, and I do want to ask, like, uh, what was your going into the race? What was your what was your strategy going into the race as far as the uh, the tires were concerned? Uh, my initial strategy was a two-stop from soft to medium to soft, and then with that early safety car, um, I had just passed the pit lane when Jeff came over the radio suggesting I pit to the mediums uh, two laps early. So um, I tried to, you know, uh, keep the delta pretty close to zero as I could, get in the uh, get in the pits early, and then uh, my teammate uh, popped out in front of me. I, I honestly was a little surprised. Um, I was actually I was really excited. I was like, cool, Renault one two, let's get it. And uh, on the restart, I initially thought he was going to let me buy, and I didn't expect him to, you know, fight so hard for the place. And unfortunately, I believe uh, he hit the wall in turn one, and he dropped back a few places and ended up finishing P9. That should have been a 1-2, uh, probably a little bit of a communication error on our part. But uh, I was glad, you know, at least uh, step up on the podium for the Renault team, and hopefully uh, k Dog did really well in the D2 race. I haven't uh, got a chance to look at anything else yet, but yeah. Yeah, I haven't been able to see the D2 race too, and that was, I mean, you beat me to my next question there. I want to see if um, you and your, your teammate were communicating a little bit on that restart, because that might have been, uh, I'll be honest, other than uh, that restart and uh, maybe the second one too, that was probably the most action you probably had uh, other than, uh, as far as other cars were concerned. Uh, but I do want to ask, was there, was there any point that you were worried that uh, you didn't have this one in the bag? Um, I honestly didn't. Uh, my ERS management was pretty good throughout the race. I, I don't believe I dipped below 50% more than a couple of times, and I was just able to keep up the pace, uh, you know, lap after lap and able to stay up there. 
So I was really just waiting for DRS to be activated and then I was going to try to make my clean passes. I don't really feel comfortable trying to pass that much on this track, kind of like everyone else. But uh, um, once uh, we meet, we made contact into turn one on that first restart, I got a little bit worried. I was, uh, I saw I think it was dissection and static. They were both kind of hounding me a little bit and I was trying to respect the guy in front of me and behind me. And then I got a pretty good uh, front row seat to the contact that was made between a couple of cars in my rear view. Uh, I'll probably have to post that for the stewards later, but um, uh, pretty pretty good throughout the race. I felt I had it pretty in control, and then once uh, I saw Chunky Corgi, he got, I believe, uh, 17 and a half seconds behind me, and my pit window was telling me I was going to, you know, be around second. I figured, well, if I put on softs, I have about, you know, two, three laps left, I can surely you know, managed to keep up, post that fast lap. I saw a uh, pocket rocket was kind of trading fast laps with someone else. I was like, oh, no, boys, it's, it's going to be on. Just wait. <laughs> yeah, it worked out for you. But, uh, I mean, congratulations on the uh, on the points, on the finish here, and uh, definitely a fantastic race to win here in Baku. So congratulations uh, to you on that. Well, thank you, Monkey. Appreciate it. Can't wait to watch the stream and see what, uh, see what else happened on track. No problem. Now, I'm going to try to take a moment. I know, uh, I think we got Houdini on the podium. Um, I kind of, I don't know if you heard on stream, I kind of derped a little bit and did not uh, snag my picture of the podium in time. Uh, so I knew I knew you won, but I can't remember my uh, who came P2, P3. So I'm just looking to, uh, to get those sent off. Uh, I think, uh, I know Houdini was... Uh, here, but I can't remember who the uh, who the final podium sitter was. Uh. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't even remember Houdini's. Uh, I can't even remember Houdini's um, uh, gamer tag here uh, either. To try to find him to send the invites. <laughs> I'm uh, definitely. Uh, looks like it was uh, dissection. Apologies for everybody uh, watching uh, watching the stream here for those post race interviews. Um, uh, trying to get those, uh, trying to get these um, these post race uh, interviews sorted out here as best as I can. Technical difficulties on my end. Apologies for that. I got dissection here. Found him. Uh, so I'll send that. Uh, I'll send that invite. We'll see if we can uh, we can get him in and uh, get his thoughts as well on that uh, on that race. I'll give it a little bit there, just to see if we can uh, at least get um, get a little bit of the podium there to see uh, see what his thoughts were. Um, but here, let's uh, let's get back to the uh, to the screen so we can at least watch something other than that blue bouncing uh, bouncing PlayStation screen there. Uh, so we'll give it a little bit. Uh, slap that racing point on there just for the time being. Now I guess. Um, I'll uh, I'll ask you another question here. Do you think uh, with some uh, with races like that, do you think we see you up here in uh, Division Three a little bit more permanently um, uh, in the fu in the near future? Uh, well, if you ask the rest of the D3 guys, I'm pretty sure they want to see me go back to D2 ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, my schedule, I still can't fully commit to come back just yet. So I'm gonna have to stick to my reserve for role for a little bit. But happy to still you know be a part of things. Perfect. All right. So it looks like uh, we won't be able to get um, uh, get an input from uh, from dissection, unfortunately, um, as he does need to. Um, he's got some uh, some other commitments to uh, to get sorted out. Uh, and I know the the stream might be uh, dragging on a little bit, so I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna call it here for today. Um, uh, I will get my uh, my post race interview um, uh, strategy worked on for next week. And uh, speaking of next week, if I recall correctly, uh, I believe we are heading towards uh, Melbourne. It is going to be the Australian Grand Prix. Yes, it is uh, Australian Grand Prix, and uh, you can catch that right here on the channel next week that is going to be a great one as it always is around um, around that circuit so you're not going to want to miss that but 
Um, uh, this was a fantastic race, and I do want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching here today. I hope you enjoyed the race as much as I did. Um, uh, and uh, until next week, um, uh, I will see you guys then. Have yourselves a fantastic evening.